we we live in a culture, in a cultural context these days, in which we, we seem to assume that science has figured almost everything out, that it's a matter of just dotting the I's and crossing the T's and that we are almost there except for a few details. And that isn't quite true. Uh, we live bang in the middle of, of a major mystery. There are things in science today, known unknowns in science, things that we have no idea about, although we know they are there. And there are also things that uh, uh, we simply don't know, and we don't know that we don't know them. Um, for instance, in the first case, 96% uh, of the stuff in the universe, matter and energy, is unknown, is what we call dark matter and dark energy. We give them a name, but we don't know what they are. And they might be here right now, filling this room, filling the space between you and me. Uh, and they don't interact with us, at least in principle. We don't, we don't quite know because we don't know where they are. Um, modern theories like M-theory talk about 11 dimensions of space-time. Uh, we experience four, the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time. There are seven that we have no idea about and we don't know what is in there or who is in there. Uh, and many other known uh, mysteries in science today. Perhaps the greatest known mystery in science today is the mystery of human consciousness. We, we do not know how something as unconscious as matter under certain circumstances can lead to something as immaterial as consciousness. Um, most scientists would say that an individual neuron, a brain cell, is unconscious. Ten of them connected, likely unconscious, in a petri dish. But at some point when you add enough of them and you interconnect them in certain ways, magically they acquire a subjective point of view and inner life, in other words, us. How that happens, why that happens, is an, is an unfathomable mystery in science today, and it may be unsolvable. In philosophy it's called uh, the hard problem of consciousness. Then you might say, well, granted that consciousness is a mystery that we don't understand, and granted that there are these other cosmic mysteries like dark matter and energy and other dimensions and so on, but what about the ordinary events of life, like human behavior, plant growth, politics, history, and so on? Are these then explained by the laws of science, the laws of physics as we know them? And I, I would dare to say, no, we, we cannot say that they are explained by the known laws of physics. And the reason is, the laws of physics, the fundamental laws of physics, are determined for very simple systems of subatomic particles. I feel subatomic particles very close to one another. And these laws basically derive how these particles interact, how they behave in the presence of one another, for, for these very small systems. And we assume that the laws we derived for these simple systems apply to very large systems. The only way to know that would be to make a simulation, starting from these basic microscopic laws and then simulate something visible, like a person or a tree or something that we could relate to. Uh, but computing power to do that is nowhere in sight. It, it, it's a practical, practical impossibility for the foreseeable future. So we, don't know, we just don't know, because perhaps as systems become more complex, as more subatomic particles play a role over a longer distance, perhaps other laws kick in, if you will. Other causal forces emerge and start playing a role that have nothing to do with these microscopic laws that we know today. If that is the case, then your life, my life, may be largely influenced by forces that we have no idea of today. Now, if so, why is science so successful, right? Because I've just said that, well, we cannot derive 
from science today that we explain, that we have explained even the ordinary facts and events of life. So why is science so successful? In what way is it successful? Science is enormously successful as the enabler of technology. Because when we build technology, we constrain the conditions such that only the factors that are known can play a role. We exclude everything we are not sure about, we don't know about, we build technology so as to exclude the unknown. The moment we do that, science is enormously successful in building computers, the camera you're using right now, uh, technology in general, healthcare technology, drugs, medicines and so on buildings, cars, and that is the success of science. Science is fantastic as the enabler of technology. The problem of our culture is that we extrapolate that success uh, and look upon science as uh, a means to derive a worldview, to derive an ontology. We think that science, because it's successful at, at building technology, also explains the way things fundamentally are. And that is not necessarily true. Science, the models of science are such that things work as if they were true. And that is enough to build technology. But to say that what science has established in its models is the underlying truth of nature is a leap of faith. It's an unjustified step, uh, epistemologically speaking. So what does it mean in practice? Well, it, it means that, um, that ultimately um, we live within a mystery, that things are not really pinned down and explained, that life is not necessarily this mechanical interplay of subatomic particles that we tend to derive from current microscopic physics. Maybe there are emergent forces at higher levels of complexity that we would consider intelligent, organic, not mechanic. Maybe these forces play a role in steering, helping steer and influence our lives in certain directions, in helping us achieve certain experiences that ultimately have a telos, have a purpose, have a meaning. Um, what it means is that ultimately perhaps life is, after all, meaningful.